Jimmy! I thought it would be fun to do another experiment using Ublek. In a previous video, we had fun seeing what Ublek actually is, a non-Newtonian fluid, which is a substance that can be both a liquid and a solid. Crazy, right? But in this video, I wanted to try something different. Let's see what happens when we put Ublek onto a stereo speaker. I want to try and get Ublek moving using only the vibrations from this speaker cone. So first, let's mix up a batch of Ublek. It's a simple recipe one part water to two parts cornstarch. So I have a half a cup of cornstarch here. Just dump that into the bowl. Try not to make a mess. <laughs> Next, we're gonna add a quarter cup of water. Now just mix it up. We're only making a small batch because we really don't need a lot of it for this experiment. All right, let's add a little bit of food coloring to make it look cool. <laughs> okay, now that we have our Ublek, we can have some fun with it. But first, let's set up our speaker. This is a speaker that I took out of its housing. It was in a wood box that was all glued together. So yes, there was a hammer involved. I didn't film it, but here's a picture of the aftermath. was the only way. I also have this set of computer speakers. We need these because of this cord. It plugs right into the headphone jack on my computer, from which I'll play an audio tone. But there's one thing I have to do to make this work. I have to connect this to this. So the easiest thing to do would be just to clip this wire and connect it to this speaker. And since what's inside of this unit is basically just a smaller version of this, it should work just fine. In case you're wondering, why not just use the small speaker? Well, the small one will work, but this big speaker will yield a much better result for this experiment. So I'm just gonna take wire cutters and snip that off. Expose the wires. Now just connect these. All right. Also, as a safety warning, I have exposed wires here, and I'm going to be plugging this into a wall outlet. This has the potential of being very dangerous, so for all the younger viewers watching, it's important to have an adult help you with this one. One thing that you have to take note of is whether or not the plug has one of these adapters on it. If it doesn't have an adapter and it's just a regular plug, then don't use it. It's got to have one of these. So what the adapter does is, see where it says output 9 volts? That means that when it's plugged in, 110 volts goes into the adapter from the wall outlet, and then it's reduced down to 9 volts to power the speaker. So it's the same as one of these 9 volt batteries. And that doesn't shock you, unless you lick it, but don't do that. So that's how we know that we're not going to get shocked by any of these exposed wires. But nonetheless, anytime you have exposed wires that are going to be plugged into a wall, double check everything for safety. Triple check everything. Have an adult triple check everything. Getting electrocuted isn't good. All right, it looks like we have it all set up. Now, let's pour a little bit of Ublek down onto the speaker cone. Just like that. All right. Let's go ahead and see what happens when we play a tone through the speaker. This will be 30 hertz. So it's not really working. So let's try it again with 40 hertz and see what happens. Alright, 40 hertz doesn't work, so let's try 45 hertz.
It's starting to work. I'm gonna try 48 hertz and see. Hertz. some pressure on the edge of the speaker cone here. Awesome. All right, how exactly is this happening? So Ublek by itself is pretty cool. It's a strange sort of liquid that changes into a solid when it's met with a force. That's because it's a suspension where you have free-floating cornstarch particles mixed into the water. When you put steady pressure on the Ublek, the water is squeezed out from around the particles of cornstarch, making them lock together and become firm. Well, that explains why the Ublek is able to become hard enough to stand up like it does. But how is the speaker able to manipulate it into doing so? The speaker is emitting a tone at a frequency of 48 hertz. That means that the speaker cone is vibrating up and down very fast. You can feel the vibrations if you put your finger on it while it's running. So as the speaker cone moves up and down, it puts pressure on the oobleck. And as we already know, oobleck becomes rigid anytime it's agitated. So it's this movement at that particular frequency that makes the oobleck stiffen up and become alive. Try making some oobleck yourself and have some fun experimenting. Maybe you can come up with some other things that could be done with it. If you want to try this at home, check it out. I made a digital copy of the audio tone that I used, which you can play by clicking here. Or you can access it on my blog at jetman.tv. I've also got all my science videos up there, as well as written step-by-step -step instructions on how to do each experiment. It's pretty cool. So yeah, check that out at jetman.tv. Oh, one other thing. I made another video about Ublek a while back, so if you want to see that, click here. All right, see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>